this time. We have uh, Joel Friday after Hake today. Joel Friday TV. We have, um, what else do we have? American Anchor Baby after that. And we have the Women's Forum happening to this, e- this uh, not this evening, in two evenings from tonight. Let's see, I think tonight. After two evenings will be th- Wednesday night and then Thursday night. Nice, ladies. Third Thursday of the month. It's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time here in Los Angeles. Nugget Man says, thanks, Hake, for making Bill work on that audio feed for all the shows. That's right. If you go to the JLP Live player or the TalkStream Live app on J.C. Lee Peterson's stuff, you can also hear... The network hosts. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Yep. Right on, Nugget Man and others. And uh, it's Tuesday, February 13th, A.D. 2024. We're going to have a loosey-goosey, hakey-hake show. Guys, you can call in. Hake's boomer shirt is yarn yellow. How fitting. Yeah, I tried to get like a boomer-friendly uh, T-shirt. Color. And should I start just wearing large? Then I don't take a risk. Then I don't take a risk. <laughs> that would have been too snug, too tight, too, uh, the shoulders being too, sh- too narrow or something like that. What a mess. I will get to your calls, guys. Um, let's just hopefully have some fun, right? I think that's a good idea, right? So anyway, guys. Let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys! How you guys doing? I feel like I need to turn myself up. Let's see. I am fine. That sounds better. I feel like I'm giving the hake news. I can barely hear myself. Uh, I am wearing my I Love Boomers t-shirt. I designed it myself. I love boomers. If I love anybody. And you should too. So you can get yours by going to thehakereport.com and looking for the Teespring link. Let me type it into the chat there. T, Hake Tees, the, the Hake Report dot creator spring dot com, great creator hyphen spring dot com. So obnoxious that I have to hyphenate that thing. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to get, it's different from the JLP t shirts that I often wear, or Bond or Fallen State related t shirts that I often wear. Those you can find by going to rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. Nice. Uh, Somebody was complaining, side note, while I'm thinking about it, uh, I'm blanking on his name, and this is what the California graphic design diploma gets you, <laughs> LOL. Like, uh, I don't even think I have a graphic design. It was a BA, Bachelor in Arts. Uh, I majored in art with an emphasis in graphic design. That means I didn't have to study art history, which I probably should have that much. I didn't have to write and I didn't want to have to go teach. I wanted to be able to design CD covers. C- CD, and nobody buys CDs anymore. CDs are out of uh, vogue. Some people do. It used to be cassette tapes when I was a kid, as I recall. I don't remember eight tracks. And then it was CDs. And now it's, uh, and then it was iPods. I never wanted to get an iPod. And then it was, you know, Napster, of course, before iPods. And then now it's people have music, stream music, or download it. What a mess. Then it was Apple, it was iTunes, and now it's Spotify. Most people are on Spotify. Terrible. Outdated Hake, indeed. 
never never had to have a degree or really used I sort of knew a little bit of Photoshop for all of the all of the things that I did in college, you know, I didn't need a degree for any job that I've ever had. <laughs> it's true. But hey, they say you have more options when you get a degree. I think that's fewer and fewer. A lot of people are studying stuff that doesn't no value, hey concluded, limited value. I appreciated it. Are, is when I'm reading the Hake news, quick question, Marty. When I'm reading the Hake news, do you still hear the pop, 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 pop? Just a quick question, side note. Let me know. Press one if it's good, press two if it's still popping. Two is bad, two means bad, one means good. Just wanting to know. Inside baseball, guys, sorry. Let me get to a call or two here, guys. Daniel in Texas is on the line. Daniel, how are you doing, man? What's up? I'm, I'm well, James. I think you're having me. Yeah, of course. Oh. Uh, I wanted to continue our conversation about Confederate politicians uh, post-Civil War because um, you were talking about the insurrection. Yeah, calling uh, it, was it truly an insurrection? I put out a clip, I believe, recently. Was uh-huh. the so-called Civil War... Were the, were the Confederates insurrectionists? Uh-huh. And you basically said the victor, the victor gets to call them whatever the victor wants. Yes. Yeah. And this was a process that was happening during the Civil War. The decision of what to do with politicians of the Confederacy that are, um, are, are now removed from office after a uh, battle. And at the time, they were taking surrenders from these Confederates, and there were governors that uh, would request to continue to hold their position as governors. Yeah. And and it, it, when we were talking about the terms of surrender in the past, um, and I was telling you that the surrender at Appomattox would, would leave um, it's it's an awkward affair. Surrenders are, um, yeah, they're, you know that you don't know what you're getting on, uh, at face value because things can change on you. Terms can change on you when you're the loser. Yeah, and, this is this reminds me so much of what they did to Trump and the January Sixers. Even though Trump and the January Sixers are almost totally peaceful, they're just calling us whatever they want to call us. Mainstream media is in on it. But anyway, uh, and they're trying Correct. to oust uh, Cooey Griffin, the Cowboys for Trump guy who participated in the January 6th mostly peaceful protest. And they said, Correct. oh, he was an insurrectionist, and they banned him from running. So it, it's, this stuff is relevant to today, chat. Some of you guys are like, no, please, God, no civil war. But I, oh, you're getting civil war. <laughs> you're getting civil We're pushing it down your throats, guys. Yeah, we're bringing you to Appomattox. <laughs> But we'll keep we'll keep it pithy. So app I keep I l- chuckled when you said Appomattox because I keep on wanting to call it Appomattox because I only ever read it when I was homeschooled. I only ever read it. I, I didn't see. hear it said. <laughs> I see. So, but anyway, Appomattox. It's it's like saying Joe from Pahonix. Right, Joe, or <laughs> Mahomes, Mahomes, pa- Mahomes, Pat- Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes. <laughs> um, so. And when they're taking these surrenders initially, they are offering things that they can't um, make good on. Oh, uh, wow. These commanders, these commanders are um, these federal commanders will uh, force a surrender, and in order to make the surrender as um, uh, peacefully as possible, which was very hard to do, they would offer terms and. His, the uh, the politicians would ask, well, can we still hold our office? And and they would basically say, yeah, I, I think that's okay. I think you can still hold your office. And then they would go to Sherman or whoever their commanding um, officer was at the time or Grant, and they would say um, they've surrendered. These were the things that um, that we've agreed upon. And they would say, no, you cannot offer those terms. You, you, they cannot remain in office. You have to tell them they have to abdicate from their office. Yeah, and so they would go back and they would say, uh, you know, these are these are the official terms of surrender, and you need to accept them now. And of course, at the time, they can't say no. 
No, that was false so, advertising. There's nobody. <laughs> there's no false. There's no law looking out for the false advertisers. Reminds right, me of right. when I I I used to make offers and things like that, and then my boss would be like, "You can't." No, we're not doing that. I'm like, oh, no, now I have to go back and say, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I hate, right. hate and, was messed up. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what, that's what happens is when, when you surrender to, um, when you surrender to somebody, it just expect that their boss may tell you something different. And that's what was happening during the Civil War. And good point. A lot. Now, here's the thing. A lot of these, um, what people consider um, very harsh penalties um, happened because of substantial victories gained by the Confederates. That slavery is still on the table when Joseph Hooker is outside of Richmond, the federal uh, commander is outside of Richmond in 1862, and if Richmond is taken and it would have essentially been the end of the Confederacy in 1862 and slavery is still on the table. Slavery hasn't been abolished yet. The emancipation of slaves hasn't been announced yet. Slavery is still there. So a lot of these things are forced out of the, the <clears throat> extension of the war. And the reason everything changes is because Joseph Eggleston Johnston, who's the commander of the Army of Northern Virginia at the time, uh, is wounded. And his wounding enables Lee to now take field command. And Lee takes command of the Army, and now he um, fights against a hooker, has a successful campaign, and continues to uh, push hooker in victories against him. And he does this over the course of the next few years. So, the um, <clears throat> anyway, my point is, the 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 longer these things go, the 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 worse they get, and yeah. you start losing more and more rights. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. It reminds me of present day Putin's situation. Um, I was watching Tucker Carlson after his interview with Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, over this uh -huh. Putin, uh, over this Ukraine versus Russia war, and Ukraine's a so-called proxy for uh, America. America's funding it, and so is NATO. And Putin was more open to negotiation and concession and compromise back at the, toward the beginning of this war, this latest, uh, after he invaded and did his military, special military action. And now it's getting har hardened and hardened and hardened because there's the offenses between one another are piling up. The numbers of his casualties, he's, his, Russia has, has lost tens, if not tens of thousands, probably maybe more of men dying and he has to have something to, he has to have more and more to show for it, or he's going to get ousted or get maybe assassinated or something, you know? I mean, yeah. he's, he's more and more dug in the more we force him to, to dig in. And I get that it takes two to tango. He's at fault too, but uh, the, the terms are less and less nice for everybody involved the longer this war stuff continues. Yeah. Wow. The the Ukraine war is interesting to me because I don't even know um I don't know what's going on outside of what appears to be a standoff or or a, or a stalemate. It appears to be a stalemate. Yeah. So I I don't know if uh Russia has accomplished objectives and right. now it's just done and just holding what it has or cuz that's what it seems like. But it seems like there's been territory gained and territory lost yeah. by Russia. Right. So, so I don't know what the overall objectives are. Yeah, me neither. I am very familiar with many wars not being clear with their objectives. I'm familiar with that at this point. Yeah. So I Interesting, guess that's man. not too crazy. That is true. 
Anyway, that that answer is why there wouldn't be any Confederate um, Confederate uh, uh, political um, positions after the war. Yeah, um, it, and, it's just not on it's not on the table at that point. And so they passed that amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, that said no insurrectionists are allowed to hold office uh, mm-hmm. in the United States, something like that, because they yep. deemed them to be in- insurrectionists. These uh, Southerners. You know, the, uh, what a terrible thing. What? Go ahead. Oh, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the politics of the Confederate Congress was, even during wartime, in itself was very mired because many of them were, uh, mo- they're, they're mostly obstructionists. They were used to being obstructionists during, uh, when, when the Union was not torn asunder. Ah. And so that they, they were basically obstructionists to themselves as well. <laughs> yeah, so they yeah. didn't get along with each other either. Interesting. So, that's, yeah. you know, I bet you that that's just makes a lot of sense. It, it would be so true. Um, because you can't be this perfect angel. People, people try to act like one side was evil and the other side was good. Both sides, I say, were probably overall evil. For them to descend into war, and so evil does have that dysfunction to it. So that yes. makes a lot of sense, man. And I and I do think that the Confederates over time gained um, an upper hand in the memory of the war. That I think over time people became more sympathetic to the Confederates. They began to like because during, after the war, the most famous man in the world at the time was Grant. Okay, Grant, Grant won. Yeah. Well, now the most famous man is Lee. <laughs> yeah, true. P- Nobody cares about Grant. Everybody loves Lee. I remember and learning they, about both of them, and I kind of liked Grant better because he was for the Union, and I was like, the North are the good guys, because that's how I was taught. And, okay. But I, I kind of liked both of them, and I always sort of loved the rebel flag because of, you know, the Dukes of Hazard and all that. But you're right. Nowadays, people know Lee, and they don't really know grant and lee is more demonized today probably than in a long time maybe than ever i wonder because the north didn't really hate lee did they or did they they probably hated him for a while no they saw him as an elusive ghost they saw him as somebody that would never be conquered yeah somebody that they would just be chasing endlessly yeah and when he surrendered it baffled everybody it baffled grant grant was not expecting lee to surrender. Wow. So that's why you hear the tales of um, Grant rushing in to the courthouse. He's he's uh, his boots are muddy. He's not he doesn't have his saber. He's not uh, formally dressed. And Lee is there, you know, in his formal attire, <laughs> re- ready to um to, to do what needs to be done. Yeah. And that's why that's why you hear that story because Grant wasn't expecting it. That's funny. It reminds me of the differences between these two artists that I heard about when I was taking art classes in college. Uh, my painting teacher told, said one time that, I forget who it was, I may be misstating the characters here, but Leonardo used to make fu- Da Vinci used to make fun of Michelangelo, say, there's pro- probably getting the names wrong, because... Uh, Leonardo would paint in his best, you know, best clothes, perfect threads or whatever. And he would never get a blotch of paint on himself. Whereas Michelangelo would be all messy. Maybe it was the other way around. Or maybe it was neither of those guys. <laughs> but reminds me of Grant versus Lee <laughs> and their personalities, if you will. Uh-huh. That's well, cool, man. And, and, and Lee, was just, he was an absolute soldier. He looked like a soldier. He was... He was um, very well admired by by everyone, and Grant was an American through and through. He was just <laughs> um, he he, uh, he he tried to be a businessman. He 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 failed at some things. He he was successful at other things. He wasn't he wasn't entirely career military. He had gotten out of the peacetime military, and then he he got back in, and so it really is kind of two totally different personalities. Yeah. Lee in the Mexican American War was a um, a battle-hardened soldier. He was the bravest soldier of the war. And that was Grant before was, Civil War. 
Bef- that was long. That was in in the 1840s. Wow. And Grant was a supply master. He was, uh, and he did see combat, um, but he knew the um, the ins and outs of supply. But so did Lee. Yeah. You know, Lee, Lee. So basically, everything that Grant knew, Lee also knew. They, they were both. You know, there's there's this um, painted. There's this picture of Lee that people form that uh, he he was just a uh, kind of a, a man of the old. Uh, way of doing things, a man of the old school, and um, he, he he wouldn't have the type of savvy of contemporary fighting like Grant would. That's hmm. simply not true. They were both uh, very savvy on modern fighting. They they both knew modern artillery and, and modern logistics. They both knew exactly uh, what worked and what didn't, and they both used it to their advantage whenever they could and to great effect. And so there's um it really is these two heavyweights these two absolute heavyweights in the world that are competing so that's, that's awesome picture. man you know i have a caller who uh has a comment about the so-called insurrection uh okay do you want to talk to mark from los angeles sure mark in los angeles you're live with daniel in texas real quick man well, yes, sir. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. I wanted to know <clears throat> if uh, Senator Strom Thurmond or Governor George Wallace or Governor Lester Maddox or any of the other heroes uh, that we had from the 20th century who were, who were uh, diehard Southerners who used the Confederate flag in their candidacy, would these good men have been considered uh, insurrectionists by the Negroes and their communist allies? That's the question. Uh, to, to answer your question, the uh, Civil War or the, the the Confederates in the Civil War gained a lot of sympathy after the war. There was a lot of sympathy. Probably through the '60s, though, right or no? Yeah, he managed to live. He lived until the '70s, I think. Okay, and maybe the '80s. He and was an old man when he. But died. this is the nineteen. This is in the nineteen hundreds, way way after the Civil War. But it, they yeah. flew the rebel flag to hearken yeah. back to the Confederacy, and there was some sympathy for that. They were not really, were they smeared as insurrectionists by uh, the mainstream? No, huh? No. And I'm just asking, by today's standards, would these idiots on the Democrat side that hate white people, would they be able to use, would, would have they, would have, at the time, that argument, would it have worked to stop the, the campaigns of Governor Wallace and Senator Thurman. They were both pro, pro, uh, both pro South. Yeah. They both used the Confederate flag in their campaigns. So my, again, my question is: by today's standards, would the commies and their allies have branded them as insurrectionists? I would. I would think that the communists, of course, would, because they'll smear you without much, without much basis in reality. Because they don't have, they well, have like, a very loose relationship with the truth, fast and loose with the facts. Well, the Colorado Supreme Court has already convicted Trump of insurrection. I know. <laughs> and yeah. if they're going to go that far, you don't think they would have done the same to Governor Wallace or um, Senator Thurman? Yeah. That's. I mean. I mean, legally, I guess my question is legally. Which one would said? They have been were, able to, was it Wa- George? Was it Wallace who said uh, segregation now, segregation yeah. forever? Yeah, I worked for his campaign. He stood against he the federal government. Man. Pardon me? He stood against the federal government. He did. So would that be considered an insurrection? Trump stood against the federal government on January 6th, not in an insurrectionist form, but in a, in a peaceful protest. Right. But they're smearing him as an insurrectionist, an insurrectionist even though he hasn't been charged and let alone convicted. So I want your guess. I'm going to try this one more time. Does he think they would be charged? These men that I mentioned would be charged with insurrection. Do do I do I think these men would be charged with if they were alive today doing their stuff? Yeah, or even back then, even in the forties and fifties and sixties, could the Southern segregationists who ran for office be considered insurrectionists? That's the easiest way I can put it to you. Well, I, I'm. Uh... I think the answer is yes. The answer is yes because they're they're already doing it. Um, but my my point is that the um, 
the law doesn't always dictate what happens. Right. True. Politics. Big time. The, the way that people are thinking and accepting. Like pot. Pot is supposedly illegal federally, but the culture is very pro-pot on both sides of the aisle nowadays. So they, they don't really enforce it. Immigration, same oh. thing. Right, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, it could be called a states' rights issue, the Tenth Amendment. That would the be nice. The Tenth Amendment stood in in front of the Fourteenth Amendment, but it didn't matter. They contradict each other. Yeah. Um, I, I would say that in the forties through the sixties, that Wallace Thurman and the rest of them would not have been charged with insurrection. I don't think they would have. Although the idea of using insurrection as a way to uh, to destroy democracy and what they're doing with Trump had this ha- idea of calling insurrection, they would have probably done it at Wallace Wan or Strom Thurmond. I don't know. I could be wrong. But seeing how they're coming after President Trump, who wasn't even a southerner, who never uses the, the uh, rebel flag, and they're calling him an insurrection. Yeah. Where Thurmond and Wallace used the Confederate flag in their campaign. Nowadays, and they... Governor Wallace was elected to office as was Thurmond. Nowadays... They don't. They call the these uh, the rebel flag the flag of the traitors, the tra- flag of the losers. They're just evil and dismissive, and hateful. But they'll well, get away. So, they'll do whatever they can get away with to stay in power and to smear their enemy, which are the people, the decent Americans. Well, the, um, the, your audience should know that the South tried to secede from the Union, well, not know overthrow. That. Well, right. Well, you know the people that want to. Call insurrection and call us or call the uh, Confederates uh, traitors and all that, or uh, you know people who tried to overthrow the government. That's all a lie. It's that's just all a lie. It's, can I can I throw can I throw my opinion? Yeah, on please. That? Um, the secession of the South from the Union would inherently destroy the Union. Oh, well, that's what you say. It, I don't necessarily agree. I, I, expl- I, want it, I, I want him to elaborate on that, Mark. Okay, I, continue. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Be- because internationally, the world is looking at the United States to fail. They're looking at the United States to fail, and they want to see the Union torn asunder. And that would happen. It would be a failure. It would be a failure internationally, and it would be a failure domestically. And the union would, over time, have very many problems dealing with with uh, Britain, and because once the uh, Confederates have their victory, what do you do with the new territories? What do you do with uh, your relations with Britain, which now has to recognize the Confederacy? They're going to have to live with it. And they, uh, to answer the first question about the territories, they would be un- they would have been under the control of Jefferson Davis. He would have been the new president. This Not is all. This is all. This is all our speculation. Of course, we're in our imaginations just, about yeah. how this would be. Go ahead. But but my point is, it is a destruction of the union, no matter what side of the line you are. Well, I say of- we would we would. Uh, Perhaps, I suggest, perhaps we would have been just greatly diminished, a la, I don't really know the history of the countries, but Northern Ireland and, and Ireland, or, you know, the different parts of the, Brit, of the UK, how, like, they're not really countries, they're kind of countries, what are they? That type of thing. It would have been just a piddly, we would have been two piddly little countries, and now we're a piddly big country. <laughs> Well, okay, if I and, could and say they, this. And, I, and this, is, mm-hmm. this is just my opinion. Yeah, I'm not, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I This is all this. just fantasy, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah but I, again, I think had the South won, the cotton industry would have kept the economy going. The North would have been under the um, rule of the South. And as far as Britain's concerned, we would have just had to work it out. You know, we're not going to let Britain tell us whether we're going to have slavery or not. And, but it does. Uh, um, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. I, I, I shouldn't. Interrupt. All I was going to say is we would have been united under uh, under the Confederacy. Slavery would have been legal, and um, the war would have ended, and I think America would have been a greater place. 
and I don't consider myself a traitor. I consider myself pro-American. I was in the military. Yeah, and of course. I, uh, I, I, I love America. The Southerners but are part, some of the some of the best Americans. They um, are, and I, I I voted for Wallace. I voted for Maddox. I voted for all the conservative Confederates back in the day. Had they won, I doubt if we'd be in the spot we're in today. And and, and I'll end with this. I think we may be coming to a second civil war. And it's it spiritually that way be. already. We are so divided. It's a mess. But yep. uh, thank and, you, Mark. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Take care, man. You're welcome. Oh. Thank you, sir. Yeah, right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, you wanted to say something, Daniel, real quick before we end? Oh, no. Um, I, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, those are all good points. And yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, we, this is all speculation. There's no way of knowing what the world would look like in, in alternate history. The only way um, forward, it, if we want any good outcome, is peace and, and unity as far as it depends on us, you know? Kind of like what the uh-huh. Bible says and what Trump is pushing for, because uh, I'm kind of see- starting to see both sides as, like, that was only a whole lot of evil comes out from war and fighting with the devils. All right. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, man. Interesting stuff. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Bye. Wow. <sighs> well, thank you guys for bearing with me through that, those of you who, who hung in there. Uh Denny in Bulgaria is on the line. Denny, thank you for calling and holding. What is up? Evening, Mr. Hake. Hope you're doing well, sir. I am. Thank you, sir. Glad to hear. I was listening to your program, Remarkable as always, and I wanted to say a few things about the Russia-Ukraine conflict and also about the refugees um, because it's, uh, it's a rather clear contrast and should be told with a lot of a lot of Ukrainian refugees are even here. They moved in Romania, in Greece as well. And I I, I don't want to insult anyone. It was never my intention, but should be told, it's a rotten country. It, it's like Ukraine. ridiculously corrupt. Yes. So and so, are, the, are, are you saying have, that the refugees are corrupt as well? Or that, no? That's why I'm calling. That's why I'm calling about. Wow. Uh, no, no, most of them, like the huge majority, definitely aren't. Because the first thing they did when they were on the buses and the trains was to look for jobs. They knew where they were heading, and they actually applied for jobs, and some of them were even approved before they even got to those countries. Yeah. A lot of them were improved, approved for jobs and for everything before they even got here. Yeah, I remember and, you mentioning this, that they've been much better refugees than the... The refugees from, say, like Africa and other, these other places, so-called refugees. Yeah, those refugees are like BMWs. You know, they look good, but they don't work during the, the winter season. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, but uh, but, but it's, it's remarkable to see them. It's been almost two years since they got here. Uh, their children are, are, are in, in the schools. They're doing pretty well. Very well. It's like they've, those people have always been here. The language is rather similar, so they, they learn it pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they do have an accent. I mean, everybody has an accent. But but it's, it's just delightful to see them. So it was actually pretty good for them because they really didn't have a lot. And most of them didn't have anything back in their home. Yeah. And now, two years after they've been here, they're applying for credit loans. Some of them purchased apartments and uh, homes and everything. There are criminals among them. Right. Yeah, of course there are. But, you know, there are criminals among every group. I don't... True. I mean, by profession and by trade, I'm an accountant. So I am the last person that should be pointing fingers. You know, there are a lot <laughs> of them among us that are not exactly clean. Dishonest accountants, huh? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I mean, and and the thing is that you know when an accountant does it, it's, uh, it's not pretty easy. But let's say it's easier to get away with it. Yeah, because it, it normally takes another accountant to catch him. Right. So yeah, but uh, and about the conflict that's going on, uh, the reason you're not hearing a lot about it is because the main point of the whole campaign was for. Putin and for Russia to take the territories that have ethnic Russians in there. 
and this is the Donetsk and the Lubansk province. Yeah. Because most of them, like 90% of the people there are Russian. They don't even speak Ukrainian language. Wow. They, they don't know it. Yeah. They, you remember 10 years ago in 2014 when, when they took Crimea. Yes. They took the whole peninsula without firing a single bullet. Wow. How nice. does that happen? Why do you think that, that happened? That happened because there were Russians over there. They didn't sell that army as an attacker. They sold them as liberated. And as much I really am not a fan of, of the Russian Federation. I'm not a fan of Vladimir Putin. Right. Uh, I know that. I, yeah. But it is what it is. Like, like them or not, those are facts. And I, I just can't twist them. The majority, huge majority of that place in Ukraine is of ethnic Russian. Yeah. And and once the, that's why you're not hearing about further invasion. I don't know if, that if you have had uh, the option to see the statistics. For every uh, one uh, Russian soldier, there are four dead Ukrainian soldiers. So Russia is losing yeah. a quarter of the numbers uh, that Ukraine is losing? Yes. Wow. And Russia's and, uh, lost a lot. Haven't they lost a lot? They've both lost a lot. Well, you're seeing it from the wrong I've perspective. Heard. Uh, because, yes, there's no such thing as a loss a lot when it comes to Russia. <laughs> because they are, and I'm not joking, yeah. this is their mentality. They, they will, they have, you know, facilities and whole cities that are made of facilities that are producing ammunition. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's yeah. been their mentality since the Second World War. This had never stopped. So their, their whole infrastructure, okay, maybe not the whole infrastructure, but the huge majority of the infrastructure is military orientated. It's been like that for 80 years. They've been preparing for this war yeah. for 80 years. Wow. So now, I'm not saying they want it. They didn't want that war. Yeah. But they were preparing it because from their perspective, we are the enemy. Europe is the enemy. Europe attacked them once during the Napoleon Wars, attacked them again during the First World War, attacked them again uh, during the Second World War. Well, Mr. Haig, those are three occasions within a hundred and something years. It's not that long and people aren't, you know, that's forgetful. Yeah. So they've been prepared. They didn't want the war. Okay, They really didn't, but they were ready for it. And this is the whole point. The Ukrainians weren't. And the Ukrainians not only weren't, they still didn't want that war. It, it all happened on a high political cir uh, circle, and people were lied about. Yeah. And as crazy as it is, I, I, the, the reason you're not hearing a lot about this war anymore is because Russia already took what they wanted. They took the territories that were full of ethnic Russians. Okay. They they actually uh, accepted the the Ukrainian soldiers that surrendered. Oh really? Uh, some yes. That they actually are treating them pretty humanely, given all circumstances. Of yeah. Course. Right. So uh, I'm there's not always going to be so like, there's always going to be war crimes. I learned that yeah. from American Anchor Baby with these well, fighters. You can't avoid them. Yeah, yeah. Because there's going to be people who get them. amped up and then go crazy. Yes, yep. but but that that has nothing to do with the Russia-Ukraine conflict. You you will have war crimes in uh, just... uh, uh, in Israel and uh, Palestine. Too. You have war crimes in Africa. Yeah, in uh, northern South Korea. I wasn't talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah, there there will be right. war crimes. But first of all, the situation can be remedied rather easily. And second of all, normally in general, the soldiers are. Professional soldiers. Yeah. All right. Uh, Russia mobilized a lot of people, but they didn't send them on the front. They they took them from the universities. They took them from the jobs. They took them from here and there, but they didn't in generally send them on the front. Yeah. You know, like if you're an engineer or a chemist, you were taken from your job and you were sent to a specific warehouse or a place to work for the war. You're still getting paid and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Maybe not as well paid as you pay, were paid on your former job, but your expenses were cut as well. So, you know, it's pretty similar. And this is their policy. 
I'm not saying if it's right or wrong. And right. You know, fairness. Who am I to say what's right or wrong in this? In this case, I'm just telling you what it is because if you if you see where the Black Sea is, and it's not a very big sea, uh, well, the, the, this conflict is at the other side of that, you know, sea uh, and, and the water map. So I am very familiar with what's going on. That's and, awesome. Man. You know, people do talk. A lot of those Ukrainians that are here do have relatives over there. They talk to them almost every day. Hmm. Wow. I, I have a lot of colleagues. I work in an international company. I have a lot of colleagues in Ukraine. And we do have common projects. <laughs> and not that I want to talk about the war, but, you know, it, it comes up as a subject. I, I can't just say I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it, it, it just seems ridiculous. Right. So this is the reason you're not hearing about it. I highly doubt that if by some miracle, maybe maybe they will just stop at the at the already conquered territories. But there's another problem with the western part of Ukraine, because a lot of them, like again, about 80, 90 percent of those people over there, they're not Ukrainian either. Those are Polish, and Polish. they speak Polish language. Yeah. yeah, they speak Polish language. That basically a Polish territory. This was specifically designed and specifically rewritten by the Soviet Union so that every country can have its own territory. It was wrong. It, it, it had consequences. A lot of people were going to pay for those consequences, but this was the USSR policy back then. Yeah. And they, they took territories from specific countries, and they give them to another, or they made entirely new countries. It's, a, 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 for example, Moldova, which is next to Ukraine. This is basically a Romanian province. They don't speak Russian. They, they're not Slavic. They're Romanian by root. But they are Moldovan now. Yeah. A, and this was, this was done on purpose. It's very similar. And, uh, again, of course, I'm not happy that those people lost their home. I'm not happy that they had to that they were forced to move elsewhere. Right. But I'm happy that they're here. That they contribute incredibly well. Nice. Uh I don't know if I told you or Mr. Peterson when that happened, they were stationed at hotels near the Black Sea at the sea coast. And it was February, it was cold. It, it was that like like now. And you know, during the winter season the hotels are empty. And it's not a good environment. You have a lot of forest over there. It's not being cleaned. The first thing they did once they got there, though they didn't have jobs, or they cleaned the whole area wow. by themselves. Right on. They, they, and, and it was an amazing thing to see. Yeah. There are some refugees from, you know, Middle East and Africa, and they don't know from which side they should hold the broom. <laughs> so It's terrible. You know, yeah, well, it is what it is. Right. Interesting, man. So, yeah, I just wanted to share this information with you because, yeah, it is a dire situation, but should be told, even in a very, very dark situation, um, there's, I guess there's always hope. And right. If you just stay observant, you can see where the hope is. Yeah. That's my point. Nice, man. I appreciate this uh, call. Denny in uh, Bulgaria. Right on, sir. Well, uh, I wish you all the best. Kind of regards to your colleagues and your viewers. And God be with you, Mr. Hake. Thank you. You as well, Denny. Right on. Bye. Bye. That's cool. William in California is on the line. William, thank you for holding, man. You are live. Hey, Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to the station. I'll hit you upside your head with all the hits from all the guys to all the girls. This is Station W-I-L. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. This is, this is me, man. Hey, that car thing, that's up the road from me. They actually got 92 cars. Stockton, was, California. Yes, uh, yes, David in Ocala, you. Florida, said yes. they had a car... A uh, street takeover where they do these donuts and sometimes right. kill people. And so Correct. 88 cars got impounded up in Stockton, California, based yep. police. So that's yep. up the street from you, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. yeah. I mean, the two towns are like night and day. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, uh, Stockton's a pretty rough place. Yeah. But um, how they did that is they infiltrated their system. See, they, they do this through mm. messaging, and they meet up. And then the reason why they can't get caught is because they just clog up all the you know the you know the streets and everything four different directions and then the police can't get to them. Yeah. Well, what happened was this: the why they got so many is that they found out where the meeting place was going to be, and that's how they did it. And it was a sting. You nice. Know? They trapped them, and now here's the deal: these drivers with millions of dollars invested in their cars, they may not get their cars back. Actually, they said they're not getting their cars back. Wow. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if I, I don't know how I feel about that. It's kind of good if they're because these street takeovers are illegal and they're evil. Man, you know they take over the Bay Bridge and they do all kinds of stuff. Right. Like that, man. That's, but that's kind of messed. Into, that is kinda I mean, messed I'm up. into racing big time. Right. Professional racing, not hot rods out the garage. Professional racing teams. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. I don't even understand the purpose of burning rubber in in a, in a circle. I can understand racing. I mean, it than, takes some skill, I would think. I've never done it. I've never it done it. I heard fun. it does take a, take a skill. But yeah. I, I, I think it does. It just doesn't make any sense to do it because look what look what happened. And I mean, I yeah. think the law is going to make a comeback. Do it out in this. Do it out in the desert. Drive out to the desert or the middle of nowhere and do it. Where you get just, a special <laughs> spot for it. Yeah. Or get a track for it that you can do that. I, it just it's not safe. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we get on a racetrack and we go 250 miles per hour, a parachute behind you to stop you. And these guys can flip those cars 50 times and they walk away. Yeah. You have to realize a passenger car does not have the fabrication that a race car has. Yeah, true. They cannot afford to put that stuff in ca- passenger cars. In fact, they don't they put governors on these cars so you can't really go past uh, 115 miles an hour or something like that? Some, something like that. You yeah. got some little, a little chip. You know, yeah, they got something that does that. But um, they these guys may not be getting their cars back. And speaking of cars, uh, over in San Francisco, I had a conversation with my brother last night, a serious conversation. I said, you see where they burned the uh, self-driving car? Oh, yes, yes. That was in San Francisco, Chinese, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chinatown. Yeah. They yeah. burned up that self-driving car. I saw it on the Jason Lee Peterson show. Yeah, yeah. I, I told my brother, and I'm going to be honest with you. I say, man, let me ask you something. Are you hooked on owning all this property we have and collecting this rent, just the title of owner? Or what is it that you like about it? Because I told him, I said, it's getting close. They're going to start robbing our tenants. Yeah. And... They're not just doing this in bad neighborhoods. They're going to the nice neighborhoods doing all this crap. Yeah, right. You know, crapping on the streets and everything. I haven't gotten any complaints from any of my tenants, but I'm getting sick of it. I'm thinking about you might getting want, out of here. I'm thinking that about might be wise. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? Know. I'm like, you, you could probably make a, good, a pretty penny selling that property because it's probably still quite expensive. Irregardless, very, very valuable, very valuable. I got a building worth four million dollars, and I told my brother, "What's the what's what, what's the deal here?" You Get out while it's worth something. <laughs> That's what I told him. I said, "You, you want to just own it? Just because you say anything. you own it, I say let's go." Yeah, let's go. You know, let's get rid of it. I mean, same with my house. That's another thing. Just because my neighborhood right here is gated and protected with private police, it is very delusional for me to think the whole state of California is like that. Well, they they might start to have a breaking point. The Democrats, you know, a, a, back in the 80s, early 90s, the Democrats mm-hmm. got kind of tough on crime because the blacks were begging for it. And three it strikes. was out of control, yes. Yeah, so we got three the three strikes, strikes yeah. law. That was bipartisan, yeah. right? Exactly. Uh, bipartisan usually means evil, so I wonder <laughs> about that. But um, they're starting, Gavin Newsom, I heard, is starting to, you know, pretend to get a little bit tougher on crime. Well, it's and also so there may be a time. turning point. Yeah, I know. It's also election yeah. time. I think he's just blowing smoke. Yeah, well, it's true. I, I, I wanted to <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to thank you for taking my call, but I can tell you this: I was listening to Thomas Sowell the other day, and he said something that hit me in the nose. He said, "Because I, I, I'm going to tell you, I had an incident where my niece and my brother's ex-wife they live in Oakland, and she said something, and and that she has her daughter, my niece." bought into this she says 
we're getting $71 million apiece for reparations. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. There was no, never no slavery in California. Where are you coming from with this? And you're yeah. 18. You're 18 years old. What are you talking about? <laughs> and her mother is indoctrinating her with that. Shameful. Reverend Brown and London Breed are giving you a pipe dream. You never chase a lie. Yeah. Um, Thomas Sowell says something. He says, he, he goes, I don't care if you do give a handout to anybody, any of these blacks, it will not put you on the same put you in the same mindset of somebody who actually has did the work. I can't get on a golf course or a basketball court and tell LeBron James, Hey man, you're better than me. I need some of that. I need some of that money. You can't do it. And, um, I was kind of shocked that my niece said that, you know, yeah. it's very alarming. It's very alarming. And, but I had to think about this. She graduated during the pandemic that diploma might not even be any good from high school, huh? Yeah. Great inflation. I don't mean, I mean, I'm just kind of, I mean, I'm just telling the truth about it. You know, right. I'm, I, I don't even, I don't know. I just don't know. man. Does she it, like it, you? It, pardon me? Does she like you? Oh, she loves her uncle. Nice. She gets spoiled. She gets her little gifts and everything, but it's <laughs> not, the, the love is not because of that. She knows I'm her uncle and I'm her dad's brother. Yeah. Um, yeah, she does. Uh, she likes me and she, she, we, she laughs and, giggle and she's a niece she's a niece you know what i mean um uh you've had some interesting calls here this morning these are people who i love i love hearing these guys yeah me too guy in texas and i like to hear rick and 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 uh uh, the guy up in illinois um uh, keith i like that Keith in illinois yeah yeah man these are people that got sense that kind of open their mouth when they know what they're talking about but you were having a conversation about i see that some blacks are starting to get some momentum with the starting to bring this stuff back up about Nazis. And if if you really know anything about any of that, World War II was not started in 1941. It was started in 1939, September the 1st. And two days later, France, England, and who was it? Was it France, England? Three of them that (laughs) uh, drew out papers of war. That's that's when World War II started. And it was up. Poland. You were talking to somebody that didn't even geographically know the country. World War II was started in Poland when Germany invaded them. So September 3rd, September 3rd, 1939, World War II started. Now, the Nazi thing, black people need to get over that because Nazism doesn't have anything to do with you, really. Right. Yeah. The first That's Reich, all... <laughs> if you knew your history, and you should know this by the 12th grade, the first Reich was uh, something to do with the Romans. The second Reich was World War One, And the third Reich is World War Two. Okay. okay. I didn't know that. That does not have anything to do with black people. Now, did the SS kill some of the black soldiers out there in Germany during That's World incidental. War II. They, mur- they basically murdered a whole unit. Yes, that did happen. But we have to get over this blackness and everything in this superior. You're yeah. actually being the way that you're actually acting the way the people you're accusing of trying to be superior. It's all my black. I'm, I'm this, that, that. It was disgusting with this national anthem they had during the Super Bowl. The black national anthem. It's disgusting. <laughs> I'm going to play it at the end of my show. Uh, not that, not that version, but a different version, a nicer version, maybe. Yes, yeah, it. I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> they need and to black, stop. you heard. I don't know if you heard the some of the callers on the JLP show, but yeah. uh, Josh from Georgia has called into my uh-huh. show before. But he's yeah. told JLP today that he grew up with the uh, so-called Kwanzaa and Black National mm-hmm. Anthem. So you yeah. got to be patient with these young blacks because they're raised in that brainwashing, like you said, well, your nieces. You people calling in your show and you, they constantly been told over and over, wow, yeah. you know, I've seen you do it. You lose me when I, I just walk out the garage and, and, and I, just, <laughs> I, I walk out the garage when I hear these conversations. Like yeah. you got two, three super good calls here with these guys, but then sometimes you get people that call in and you have said it. I've seen you say it and you go, wow, <laughs> that right. actually doesn't make any sense. You're all over the place. But the thing is, is, all of this blackness, Black Panthers, BLM, none of it worked. And as for the insurrection, 
I do believe what the guy in Texas was talking about. The losing side is the one that, well, the winning side usually gets the, they're, they're the ones to get to call it what they want to call it. Yeah, what a mess, now, whether it's true or South, false. Yes, as far as the South, they were the more American people. As far as the insurrection, it's not an insurrection if you knew what you were talking about. It's right there in the First Amendment. You're talking about the, the 2021 January no, 6th thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it is. It is. Now, here it is in black and white. The right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government re- a redress of grievances. Right. I know that. And we all do, know that. You do. Yeah. So that's not an insurrection. You know. Yeah. And the it South was a riot actually— at the well, Capitol. Yeah. And yeah, most, well, it, it was a mostly peaceful protest, part of which turned into a riot. Right. Got out now, of hand. now oh. if you knew anything, the um, the South, the, well, the North, well, this government has actually adopted some of the South's beliefs, especially the one where states shall govern their own laws. They were fighting for independence. Right. That so, was that was what the North was. That was what the whole country was founded on. That the states would have their rights. Uh, they, that's in that is definitely in the Bill of Rights. Yep, and that's where you should be careful about Google and reading things just one two paragraphs. You have to understand. I know our Bill of Rights, our Constitution, which is the best in the world. Is it? Even though we <laughs> have a lot of problems. Yeah, huh. it's the best. You show me. <clears throat> James, I show can't, me so, a country I don't know that anything. has it better. Show I don't know any other country. country. <laughs> you, you, you can't find one, can you? Of course. You? I'm, not, I'm not here to, uh, to pretend I know. I'm just questioning everything. Uh, well, no, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Because what you do is, if you don't know, you just ain't going to speak on it. Like right. you just said, if you miss Or I'll angle, speculate a little. But yes. So, who doesn't? Right. Who doesn't? You know, and I mean, any real adult would do his own research and say, oh, wow, I was wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Yep. And a shout out to David and Ocala. I looked up that that mute that uh, Forty Nine Reasons. Um, uh, great music, man. Nice, <laughs> nice. I think I think he's talking about uh, an artist named um, Julius Brockington. Is what he said. Forty Nine Reasons. It went over my head. David and Ocala, Florida, yeah. called yesterday. First thing yesterday on Hague. He's good. He's and he good gave guy. some recommendations for yeah. William. He's a, he's good. It was, it's nice. Tell him I listened to it. It's great. Nice. It's great. And and uh, Rick, we need to get more from him. And Indeed. He, because we do have uh, very sensible thinking black people in this country. We True. do. We do. But for me to say black people are doing good just because me as an individual is doing okay, that's very delusional. Yeah. Well, thank you, William. Appreciate you, man. Take care. And thank you for taking my call, James. All right. Bye. It's time for Steve Taylor Tuesday, guys. At the end of the next hour, I will have a uh, Black History Month. Lift every voice and sing Black National Anthem, so make sure you stay tuned or tune in or jump to to that if you want to hear it. But it is Steve Taylor Tuesday. This is... What track is this called? Uh, Jim Morrison's Grave. Jim Morrison, you know, the guy from The Doors. I think he was the lead singer of The Doors. Am I right? The Doors, great band. Jim Morrison's Grave by the Christian singer slash artist Steve Taylor from the 1987 album, I Predict 1990. I hope you enjoy it. You musical Philistines, I'll be right back to more calls. You can call in right now during the Hake break. Be right back for hour two. Hang tight.
I don't know what it's about, but it is Christian. And it sounds cool. To me. So late 80s. I mean, it's in the title. It's about Jim Morrison's grave. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to Steve Taylor and the Goodyear Blimp in the video. Hake B roll. Hashtag. Trust me, bro, it's Christian. Steve Taylor, Jim Morrison's grave. R.I.P. Jim Morrison, lead singer from The Doors. Did he OD? The Doors were not Christian, right? But they were talented. Talent on loan from the Lord. Or was it the devil? 1987, I predict 1990. Thank you, uh, Steve Taylor. Talented, sort of an independent thinker, Christian musician. Sort of cr criticized a lot of the Christians, by the way, I'll have you know. A quick super chat or two here, guys. You can super chat over on buymeacoffee.com slash the hate report or wherever you like. Rumble, DLive, uh, where else? Odyssey, O D Y S E E dot com slash at the hate report. Carver says, Hey, Hake, in keeping with the topic of today's show, I have another Hake's hypothetical for you. If the Bond staff, was around. It's if the Bond staff were around. <laughs> Correct your grammar there, or whatever you, word use. Uh, during the Civil War, on which side would each of you fight? On which side, for which side would you, each of you fight? No cop out, don't take sides, snake answer, please, says Carver with his coffee. Well, my grandpa, I think, came from Virginia. I heard one of my great grandpas came from, uh, was almost burned at the stake by American Indians. Cool, huh? One of my great great grandpas or great 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 grandpas. But that may have been an old wives' tale. I feel like my mother might have told me stuff that, <laughs> you know, uh, Pocahontas' mother told her stuff and she turned out to be one ten twenty fourth, one one thousand twenty fourth. <laughs> Of an engine, American engine. <laughs> so who knows? But I don't know. I trust my mother and my father. I don't know. I saw what Virginia, what was Virginia? Wasn't that General Robert E. Lee? Wasn't he from Virginia? So out of loyalty to my state, because loyalty to the state, your state, meant more than loyalty to the country, the uh, federal government back in those days. At least that's what I heard about General Lee. So I probably would have uh, fought for the uh, South, the beautiful South, even though I was raised with the North are the good guys, the South are the bad guys. Who wants slavery? I don't want slavery. I don't want to be a slave. I don't particularly want a slave owner. I can barely handle a cat or zebra finches or turtles. I had to, I had to return the turtles or a snake. <laughs> Or an iguana. Or a dog. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, so that would be me. JLP would be fighting for the South, of course, yeah. Um, Joel Friday would have fought for the South because he's from Shriver Shreveport. <laughs> nah, Shriverport. American Anchor Baby. 
He would have fought for the South, although he's part communist, that is to say Cuban, so he might have been for the North. Because <laughs> the communists were cheering on the North. They were cheering on the war to get rid of slavery. Uh, and the Irishman might have fought for the North because he was from New Jersey. Sean would have been for the North. Uh, Hassan would have been probably for the beautiful South. Yes, indeed. He has some roots in, like, Florida. Was Florida a state back then? Did they take sides with the South? I don't even know. <laughs> Hassan is a whoops, cracker. <laughs> cracker. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Twitch. Shout out to Radulazer. I might not see you on Twitch for a while. I might get suspended for that one. <laughs> He would have caught, fought for Canada. Or who would have fought for Canada? Oh, Nick, the anchor baby. Who else is around here? Uh, Daniel would have... Would have... Uh, I don't know what Daniel would have done. Probably for the South. Yeah, for the South. So we have more Southerners, based Southerners. But it would, be, would have been brother against brother. What a shame. Thank you, Carver, for your coffee. <laughs> I think I gave you your coffee's worth on that. Let's get to Keith in Illinois, who's on the line here. Keith, thanks for calling and holding, man. How are you doing? All right. Hey, guy, how are you, buddy? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Yeah, I was um, calling and talking about why um, I don't uh, like, uh, what I don't like about Black History Month. is all the liberals and the Democrats do is, you know, bring up more division. You know, they bring up more hate. They bring up stuff from 1942. And we, we don't even know if it's true. They just say that in a town of Mississippi, four black men were marched into a jail. <laughs> Nobody even knows it's true. But yeah, and they don't know true. why or what. Right, right. They, 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 don't never, they never explain, like, why or what. Or even if they do, I still don't know if the story is true or not. I, mean, right. I don't know. Yep. And all they do is for division. So Black History Month has never been used really for to make people, black people feel better about the achievements of good, honest, hardworking black people. They never really use it to give black people any pride about, you know, the, 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 some of the situations that, that these uh, black people was under. But they were able to overcome and able to create things that help help the world today. They never use it for that. It's yeah. always for anger, the vision, more divisiveness, more divisive. So it's like this is like Pride Month. I I'd be glad when Black History Month is over with in Pride Month. I'd be glad when it, because it's just like it's never used but nothing but but division. And you get these so called fake black activists and these politicians. I mean it's just all so fake. I don't understand why people I so I mean I understand, but it's just so weak and pathetic that they fall for anything. I mean it's like no evidence. Yeah. I had a guy that I thought was kind of smart, you know, kind of intelligent because we agree on nine, 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 ninety percent of everything. Right. He told me that Donald Trump was the head of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> I said, "What? No. I said, "Well, what evidence did you, did you have?" He said, "That lady." I said, "Maybe you're talking about Tiffany Cross. She no longer works for anybody." But I said, "How come he dated a black woman?" He helped Jesse Jackson run for president in the 80s. I said, why was he uh, awarded NAACP awards? Why is he taking pictures with Snoop Dogg, Michael Jackson, Oprah? Why was he really adored by the black community? He only became racist when he ran for president. Yeah. I said, so tell me, why was all those things in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s show that he was not a part of any kind of clan, let alone the head of the Ku Klux Klan? Right. Any part of the clan. I said, now, I got evidence. You're going to tell me what that lady said. But he was so emotionally bound in it that I was like, well, you know, you can think what you want to say. I said, I came up with evidence. You came up with nothing because right. some lady said. Uh -huh. But I don't think I like to say this about men, period, especially black men. The men, they are watch TV, but they are nothing but she males. More, anytime you can vote for Hillary Clinton or five foot three little old white woman, <laughs> And you call yourself a male to be president of the United States? There is something mentally, unstably wrong with you. Yeah. How could you call yourself a man? I know. <laughs> how could you look at the male and say, I'm a man? When you're a five foot three, 70 year old white woman, I don't care if she's a black woman, this is a woman's here, but I'm talking about if you're a black man, 
How could you say a, a five foot three, seven year old white woman is your savior? Black, black people's biggest problem is they're always looking for a savior. So the liberals and the, and, and the Democrats are always giving them a savior which works for them. You know, like black people don't think they can do nothing on their own. Like they can't save their community. They can't raise their kids. They can't get a job. They can't do nothing yeah. without a savior from the liberal. And the, the devil will always send them a fake so called savior. You know, the preacher going to save them, the, the Democrats going to And it's been 60 years. And nobody saved them from nothing. But they're still waiting on some kind of messiah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's just so ridiculous, though. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. It's true, man. <sighs> and there's this false pride that they have, that they take on mm-hmm. right. about what this black person did or this right. black person right. did. And right. they think that it's them. They take a, an identity along with them. Oh, that's one of us. That's, as, that's if you, like as if that yep. reflects well on you personally. And it's, that's such an empty, false pride. And I think that a big part of why they're fa- falling into this so deeply, and it's something that human nature does. Like, oh, we get mm. excited. Oh, the white man beat the black man in the, in the, uh, in the boxing match. Tyson yeah. Fury, we'll call him white, yeah. even though he's Irish. Because he beat right. Deontay Wilder. I get right. that every human being falls into that thing, but I think the blacks fall into it more deeply. Oh, yeah. One, because they're fed this oh, racism, dumb lie right. all the time. Right. And two, right. because they have no parents. They don't have that uh, natural identity or confidence from a good, strong father um, You're right. and, You're right, and right, their hey. mother. So, You're right, hey. You're so right, I think hey. that they're just blind and brainwashed more easily because they're basically like a bunch of women. You know how bre- women get brainwashed that's, easily? So that's, I agree with you 100%. That's, that's what's happening what to the blacks. I call them she-males. I mean, if you call them <laughs> oh, man, you can depend on a five-foot-three, seven-year-old white woman. I mean, I, I just bring it up to Hillary and white. Yeah. I don't have anything against you know, anybody, any race. Right. I believe in a human race. Right? That's all I believe in. Nice. But if that's your savior, you got a serious beta... You know, you, you have a feminist, you just, you're just like a feminist, you're a Delta Beta feminist. <laughs> they call yourself a man. You yeah, just, it's true. It. Yeah. You know, like I said, they've been told that they can't save themselves. It you reminds me of, it reminds yeah. me of uh, the caller from the Jason Lee Peterson show today, uh, Jason from Buffalo, New York, talking about uh, Trump is a liar and he's stupid. I don't feel any sympathy for stupid, but I'm a... I'm a empathetic person. I have empathy. Mm-hmm. I know what people are feeling, but not for stupid people and not for right. fetuses because that's the mother's uh, that's the mother's decision to kill the baby in the womb. Oh, it's not a baby, it's a fetus. As the brainwashing, yeah, yeah. you just told something and you swallow it and repeat some lie mindlessly and you're I think that that's ha- what happens a- a- among all people too because you'll hear the so-called right-wingers and the Bible thumpers and the whatever thumpers that you want repeating Uh stuff that they've heard, and they're just empty intellectuals, devils fighting. Yeah, Yeah. and like I said, you give, because they've been feminized, I mean, beyond, 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 beyond femininity, they just, these males are so feminized, I believe, but if you give them a righteous man, that's going to, you know what I'm saying, that, that they should listen to, vote for, or, you know, follow. I mean, I, I don't believe in following, man. But, you know what I'm saying, I would say because they're weak, follow. They won't follow him. They want to find some guy going to bring out the feminist, you know what I'm saying, the emotional feminine side. That's who they're going to follow. And he's going to lead them right to nothing but self-destruction. Yeah. It, it's, just like, it's just like they're a bunch of, like, a bunch of little prostitutes. And they're looking for some pimp. And they need a man looking for some pimp to save them. They've been feminized by watching sitcom, listening to MSNBC, CNN. But you already have to have somewhat of a feminine spirit to even be attracted to some 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 crazy ideology like like that. Anyway, you have to be feminized. It's like you cannot. You have to plant on, on fertile ground. You know, you can't plant. You can't plant a, plant a seed on concrete or rock. 
So they're not so going to take it. We already have a feminist kind of mentality. Yeah. And, and they believe all the lie, all this emotional lies and all that they feed into it. And they don't want to hear any truth because if you remember, if somebody makes you emotional, you don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to hear any facts and figures. You don't want to hear nothing. You just want to hang, hang on to your feminist spirit and you'll ride, you, you'll beat that dead horse. And then they ain't gonna get up and run no race, but they've been, they just been. It's just so sad if you ask me that you can vote for a five foot three, seven year old white woman and call yourself a man, and then turn around and vote for old Joe Biden and then come on and Harris. You, 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 you are nothing but a she male. I don't like that term, man. <laughs> well, I mean, but I, I got you. Female. Yeah. I just had to say that. And I appreciate you letting me speak. Y- y'all got to y- y'all take care of yourself. Thank you. Rachel. Thank you, Keith. Take care as well. Bye. 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 You know, I was reading the my bit shoot comments. I read my bit shoot comments sometimes, and this guy Pete again gave me a tip. Pete from Bit Shoot, B I T C H U T E, bitshoot dot com slash the Hake Report. Uh... By the way, JLP, The Fallen State, Bond, they're all on BitChute as well. Um, and he asked me, and I don't know what the occasion was, why he asked me this, but I looked it up. He said, have you ever heard of the domesticated silver fox experiment? Let me check what exactly he said. Russian, oh, have you ever, Pete asked. Have you ever seen the Russian fox experiment? Russian fox experiment. You guys heard of this? I feel like almost American Anchor Baby is talking about this this stuff because American Anchor Baby knows a lot of stuff. Or he looks up stuff. Uh, I'm like, no, I have not. But I looked into it. And so these Russians for decades, I guess, have been trying to do this thing called evolution, but very fast. Where, you know, we've have these all these breeds of dogs. Dogs, I guess, are not foxes. Foxes and dogs are two different animals, apparently, according to them. And so, uh, they've been breeding these foxes that are more friendly to human beings. Friendly, we breed you. If you're not friendly to human beings, if you run away or you're a little aggressive, we don't allow you to multiply. They're using these silver foxes. Not to be confused with the older ladies. We're not talking about older ladies' silver foxes. (laughs) I called some old lady mildly attractive, and I didn't mean it like that. And somebody's all, oh, Hake is into the silver foxes. Not like that. The domesticated silver fox is a form of silver fox... This is according to Far Left Wikipedia, okay? All right? Totally useless website. (laughs) Not as bad as Google, though. Not as useless as Google. Uh, That has been, to some extent, domesticated under laboratory conditions. It's a silver fox is a melanistic form of wild red fox. Melanistic meaning they stay... A melanistic squirrel is, like, all black. Or albino, like, white fur or whatever. Because red foxes have some silver in them, I guess. But whatever. They use selective breeding to transform the species. As described by Charles Darwin on the origin of species. They recently came out with Darwin Online Project, something like that. And put out all the stuff that he ever read, supposedly, that he's documented as having read. uh, On the internet. Internet. Took him like 15 years to do it, by the way. On the origin of species, he's the guy who came up with this idea or theory of evolution. That men came from apes, or something like that. Or men are apes, something like that, whatever. Don't know, don't care. But this thing, they um, they bred them to be... Domesticated, meaning you can have them as pets. They're expensive, but you can have them as pets. And I think it was founded by this guy, Dmitry Belyayev. Belyayev, something like that. He questioned how the diversity of canine breeds had arisen from domestic dogs 
Lupine, Lupine ancestors. Lupine means wolf, I guess. Because you know you have, you get lupus, some of these ladies get lupus, especially ladies do. And they look like wolves. Wolf, Lupine, lupus ancestors. I guess all the dogs came from wolves, so they claim. So he couldn't, fig- he couldn't come up with uh, how, they, how they came about, try to breed these dogs to be, I mean, these foxes to be domesticated, pets. And then they came up with this thing called domestication syndrome. Domestication syndrome. This is what was interesting to me about it. I believe that we have a domestication syndrome. <laughs> Our human beings are suffering from lupus is Latin for wolf, says, uh, Latin for wolf, says, come on, man. Wolves are highly intelligent. Yeah, true. And I think human beings used to be tougher, rougher, stronger, maybe bigger, maybe even smarter in some way. We think we're so smart. I think that's because we're so stupid. Stupid. Don't say that word, kids. Too much. But I think we're so stupid that we think we're smart. You know how stupid people think that we're smart? <laughs> we, somebody called Hake, I think it might have been uh, Flat Earth Victory, called Hake, house cat Hake, meaning I'm a domesticated kitty cat. I'm not scary, tough, uh, stuff like that. Aggressive. My cranium is smaller than my uh, ancestors. I think this is, you know, the uh, tough times make weak men type things. We're getting domestication syndrome. Just like these dogs. These little dogs that are all domesticated. They have floppy ears. You see Hake with his floppy ears? (laughs) You see all these people with their floppy ears trying to be animals? Why can't you say stupid now? Uh, because it's considered rude if you're a child and you're calling other children stupid all the time or you're calling your parents stupid all the time. Even if it's true, it might not be proper to say it too much. That's why. You can say it. You can say it, Dean, I guess. Wolves have bigger craniums. They're more aggressive. They uh, have... I think they have a shorter period in which they're making babies. Whereas, I think domesticated dogs can make babies all year. And that's why, maybe why they're so, like, trying to have the S word all the time. I heard that bonobos are supposedly kind of like chimpanzees. Bonobos and chimpanzees are supposedly related to human beings, they say. And chimpanzees are more violent. But the bonobos are more S word sexual. They have the S word a lot, I heard. Just for the thrill of it. Not just purely for, like, having, having uh, children. Perverted! <laughs> and they say that the domesticated animals can, ha- can breed all year. <gasps> and they have smaller heads, smaller craniums. Do, do women have smaller craniums than men? I'm curious. Is that true? Come on, Hake, don't be a house cat. Oh, man, Hake. Don't be a house cat, Hake. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, they have just, they're less, they have less lower testosterone. The domestication syndrome animals have lower testosterone. And so they're less aggressive. That governs aggression and brilliance, maybe. <laughs> you know how the how men versus women men have a wider bell curve of smart versus really stupid really really smart versus really really stupid than women women have a more limited bell curve in terms of brilliance and stupidity the men get really dumb or really really smart and women get r- relatively smart and relatively dumb but mostly they're just midwits Midwits. Is Hake a midwit? I've asked this question three times now on the show. Or is Hake 
more like a dimwit, or is Hake brilliant? <laughs> So I just saw this thing about the floppy ears and snub nose. They're not as, they're not as awesome. Now it's good to have balance in terms of aggression. I heard that blacks have higher testosterone, including the black females have higher testosterone. And maybe that contributes to when they're angry, they're aggressive. And when others are angry, they become petty, conniving. Uh, underhanded, whereas blacks are just like thump you or whatever. Is Hake woke? What do you mean by that word, Steve C? I'm just saying I think that there's this domestication syndrome that's happening and it's gone too far. I wonder if <laughs> Hake saying we need to reconnect with nature. Hake, a based pagan, asks Kevin how. Because I don't think he, is he not a Christian or is he a Christian but he's pagan? Because I have some pagans in my chat. Pagans among my audience or the JLP radio network audience. There's a pagan who calls the American anchor baby. He's done away with the Christians because the Christians, he thinks... Surrendered the white race to uh, all the other races, to this diversity, these Christian nations, countries. The Christians suffer from domestication syndrome, became nice rather than, rather than righteous. Maybe we became nice. I just wonder about this. They say that they closed our our third eye, whatever that is, with the uh, tap water, which Hake used to drink. They gave us the, uh, that, what's that stuff that's supposed to clean your teeth, keep your cle teeth from getting uh, holes in it because we eat so much sugar? Fluoride, thank you, Nick and Hassan. They put fluoride in the water. And it makes us dull. They've pushed the gay agenda and the effeminate agenda on, on the men. Because the men were too tough, too manly, too freedom of speech, too cussing and, and racist, so-called. Using racist language and racist messaging. Now we have to be domesticated and nice. Don't offend anybody. Domestication syndrome. That's what I'm thinking is happening to... America, the whites, to the men around the so-called West. It's probably even happening in the East. In uh, Japan, you hear about Japan is suffering from this diversity problem. They had a non-Japanese Ukrainian Miss Japan who got her thing revoked. Nice. Her title revoked. She surrendered. They have the Muslims taken over in uh, Russia. Japan is faux West, says Nick. Yeah, good point. But uh, even Russia's probably uh, following at a slight distance behind us. We think they're so based. They're not based compared to how they used to be, I bet you. Uh, it's probably happening kind of around the world, this phoniness, kissing up to the women, kissing up to the gays to a certain extent, and the LGBT and the other races in this diversity stuff. And we're, we have these nice, spoiled lives where we can be indoors all day, not go outside. Oh, by the way, they have less tough, uh, the domesticated animals, domestication syndrome animals. They have more allergies, <laughs> you know, about the, or something like that. They fall prey to disease quicker than these wolves. They have a tougher, the wolves have a tougher immune system. A tougher immune system. So that's just a little point that I wanted to raise for you guys. Something to think about. <laughs> Allergies don't exist in these tougher-to-live-in countries, says Nick. Yeah. 
all these former communist countries, they're tougher than us, you know? Kind of. Because they brought tough lives upon themselves. They say that the Soviets are base compared to us. Old Soviets, the old Russian communists. I don't know. I heard that they did use and exploit the uh, degenerates, and then they killed them all. That's, I disavow that. That's bad. That was the wrong way to go about stuff. <laughs> but use these people and then spit them out and, and just terrible. Wow. By the way, shout out to Pete for uh, that tip on domestication syndrome and d domesticated silver fox. I don't know what the point of his thing, but that's the point that I gleaned reading about this domestication syndrome. But a tip from Pete on BitChute. You know how I wore that t-shirt that says, and I have it on my cup, la la la, the Hague Report, la la la, my mug here. M not my face, this mug, this cup, water cup. Well, also on BitChute, he says, he explained that la la la, do re mi fa so la, is number six, do re mi fa so la, la la, six. The sixth note, T-Do. If you ever watch The Sound of Music, those are the... Those, that's an octave, I guess. Uh, la 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 is 666, and he said blue in that chat. I'm like, what do you mean by blue? Well, blue, low-key, blue. Blue's color frequency, he says, is 666, or 66.6. 66.6 .6 what? I don't know. But he says, uh, blue. Maybe not this color blue. Frequency is 666. What? Is it kind of like worshipping the sky, Mother, Mother Nature? I don't want to lift up my arm too big, too big because lest I have, lest I be unsure. The Smurfs were blue, he says. <laughs> this may seem silly, because it is. The Smurfs, you guys remember the Smurfs? Maybe you don't. Gen Xers would. Older millennials might. Some of the boomers would. I love boomers. And the Smurfs did la la la. La 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 la. I heard. I don't really remember the Smurfs that well. I didn't watch it too much, but I did kind of like it. But I remember people s singing the Smurfs and they would sing la 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 la. Something like that. It is an alignment. They put la 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 in a lot of music. They even made La La Land the movie, L.A., Los Angeles, and called it La La Land. I saw that movie. Hmm. Satanic messaging and everything. I think it's not too big of a deal. Pure evil, they were not good. Are you referring to the Smurfs? Were the Smurfs evil? Smurfs were like these little cartoon characters. There's a whole bunch of them. They were like gnomes, or, I don't know, midgets. <laughs> Shout out to the midgets. I don't mean that, midgets. Ake, never admit you saw La La Land ever again, please. Didn't they have that, that one actor who's pretty good, though? Ake loved that movie. <laughs> but he, he, the point is, the guy is saying there's all these satanic messaging. And if the sky is blue, maybe they're talking about worshiping creation, which is the devil. It's devilish to worship the creation rather than the creator. The devil wants you worshiping anything but God. Right? I think. Smurfs were very cool, says Terry. Thank you, Terry. So thank you uh, for that tip over on BitChute. I do try to read my BitChute comments. That's nice. You know, I was reading about uh, this case in Texas last week. I don't know if I have it handy that I could read it to you. But uh, this man, this so-called husband, tried to poison his wife's baby, give, feed his wife some poison, and... 
the point was to make her have a miscarriage. A miscarriage. And he damaged her ex-wife now, right? I guess he divorced him over this. Women. <laughs> no loyalty. <laughs> Kidding around a little bit. But he didn't want the baby, I guess. Husband? Not wanting the wife to have a baby? You have to be pretty far gone. And what happened was, word got out. It went to court. And he got two years. Two? Two? Something like that. Two years in prison and ten years probation. Something like that. Or was it 60 days probation? Abortion. I, I, can, I can find the details on this story, but I saw uh, Esoteric in the chat during this Hake News segment. I guess it was on February 9th, just a few days ago, last week. Ten years probation is pretty brutal. People would rather serve longer time than one... I, maybe it was 180 days? People would want to serve longer time than 180 days, which is less than half a year, I think. To get out of probation. Really. Really. Um, that's wild. I don't know anything about the, uh, the penal system, really. Very limited first-hand experience with, uh, with all that. I've been to, uh, some prisons and things. Visited, uh, some prisons along with JLP. You know, to speak to the, uh, to speak with the um, people, because JLP has spoken to inmates, prison inmates. Uh, Bill Lockwood, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, Patriot Pulpit. He too has talked about, has talked, worked with the kids, the juveniles in the juvenile detention centers. But, uh, According to the ladies at the skim, on uh, the week of February 9th, last week, I guess, a 39-year-old man was sentenced to 180 days in jail for drugging his then-wife's drinks in order to get her to miscarry. And as you know, Texas bars, or you, as you may know, all abortions, except in the case of a medical, medical, in, in, medical emergency, Still, the man managed on seven separate occasions to drug his wife's drinks, allegedly with a Mexican brand. Why a Mexican brand of abortion pills? Doctors who facilitate abortions face the threat of life in prison, fines, and the loss of their license. In this case, however, the man got a measly 180 days in jail and 10 years probation. Ten years probation is a, kind of a long time, but what's probation? What are you not allowed to do? I don't know. After pleading guilty to injuring a child, injuring the child, and a pregnant person, I hope, slash doubt, I hope not, and slash I doubt, that Texas called it a pregnant person. That's the far left females at the skim calling it that. Give me a break. And this man looks white. Huh. Might be mixed. Might be part Hispanic. He did use a Mexican, Mexican brand of abortion pills. But a lot of whites will go south of the border to get illegal stuff. You know, drugs. Or to get stuff done medically that's cheaper down there. Or, you know, fireworks and things. The woman gave birth ten weeks early. Her daughter according to her, said that her daughter suffered developmental delays and reportedly had to spend 117, 117 days in the hospital in her first few months of life. That's pretty wild, huh? <clears throat> so, I gotta show you the picture of this guy. I just looked it up now. I am remiss. Pardon Hake. It's U.S. News, and his name is Mason Herring. Mason Herring, 39-year-old Houston attorney, pleaded guilty Wednesday, February 7th, 
to injury of a child and assault of a pregnant person, say the far-left extremist AP. 39-year-old male. Pretty crazy. Yeah, Texans who perform abortions, meaning kill the babies in the womb, they now, <clears throat> excuse me, now face up to life in prison per the Texas Tribune and a $100,000 fine, the largest state to restrict abortions. It's a legal minefield. And so it's complicating the lives of these doctors who normally would kill the babies, uh, supposedly to protect the women. Let me put this in the folder real quick, this screenshot here. Uh, Hassan, I just put it in the Tuesday folder on the outside there. This is the picture of the dude. I don't know, what do you guys say? Hispanic? Or is he a normal white? Or what? <laughs> Doesn't he look like- he looks whiter than Hake, right? But I'm- the structure of his face, the look on his eyes. <laughs> He could be a light-skinned, part Hispanic. <laughs> Hank trying to distance himself, just like the blacks. Uh, what a mess. He's an attorney. He was an attorney. Mason Herring. <laughs> so that's wrong. That's evil. But that's crazy, huh? Just a little news update for you. A little bit of old news, but... Whew. Didn't actually successfully kill the baby, so right on. He is not Mexican, says King of Hueco Mundo. <laughs> All right. Let me get to a uh, call or two, guys, in the last few minutes here. I got to end on time because Joel Friday is coming up next. Stephen in Maryland is on the line. Thank you for calling, Steve. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, sir. How about you? I'm fine, too. Thank you. Good. I'm calling. Are you guys of one of the right wing stations? Yes. Wow. What do you and mean, I'm wow? Guys, I mean, you guys are black, too, right? Yeah, some of us are black. I'm not, but yeah. Oh, you're not black? I thought you were. You thought I was black? Yeah. Well, if I thought that that uh, white man was eight, was Mexican, then I guess I, you could confuse me for being black. Oh. Yep. Uh oh, oh what I called for about the guy talking about confederacy. Yeah, the Confederacy. Yeah, and they, if they won, it would have been better Better if they had won? Yeah, he speculates that it would have been better had the Confederates for won than the, than the Northerners. Better for who? Better for who? Yeah. Better for the uh, country. Better for the whites. The whites, right, yep. period. Period? You don't I'm think sure. it would be better for the blacks? No, that's what I'm saying. Why not? I don't want to kill myself in no field. You don't want to work in a field? No, work for nothing. Well, you're older. You sound older. You're older than you would probably be in the house by now. No, 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 no. I'm, eight, I'm at really 87. I turned 87 yesterday. Really? You're 87? Yes, sir. Nice. Happy birthday. Belated. Thank you. Yeah. Belated. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I, see, what, I, what I've done in my life, see, 30 years, I was in the Air Force. Okay. And 25 of them was an air traffic controller. Really? Yeah. So, so you, uh, did you do a 100% good job? I did a great job. Nice. Right Never on. had an air collision, never lost a plane. That's when they made blacks quality. That's right. They but did I not have domestication syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, plus I was raised, I mean, I was, uh, taught in Mississippi at Keesler Air Force Base. Nice. Now, seeing how they would treat you guys, well, us guys, not you. Black people down in Mississippi, I saw it firsthand. They treated you like I, like tough men, non-domesticated. No, they didn't treat us like that, no. We weren't men, we were boys. They treated you like, like, they treated you very harshly. They didn't treat me because I was in the Air Force. Oh, good. I just cruise through the town every now and then. Yeah. I didn't go off the base that often. Nice. But anyway. 
So yeah, they, they treated can... they treated blacks badly in the Mississippi back in those days. Yes, sir. Back in the fifties. How so? What'd they do? They list Emmett Till. Remember him, little boy, fourteen. He wasn't that little, but uh, yeah. He was fourteen. Who's they? The kid. That was, that's two guys. Right. Allegedly. Well, look. But Allegedly. that's not right. that does that's not reflective of how blacks were treated. That's, that's one guy. That's no, one black. Jur- that's how they treated one black. What about the jury that set them two guys free? Maybe there wasn't enough evidence to convict. It wasn't enough. Oh, come on now. I'm I'm the just guys, saying. The two, guys, the two guys came into the house and took the boy out, right? That's what. That's the theory. That ain't the theory. I that's didn't see I it happen. happen. No, you wasn't there. You were, wasn't even born. <laughs> I wasn't a twinkle in my mother's eye. I don't even know that's if my right. mother was a twinkle. twinkle. <laughs> 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 Emmett, Till went, Emmett Till happened in the 50s, right? Yeah, I saw the, I saw the two dudes. My mother too. was alive. Your mother was alive? Oh, yeah. quite sure your mother was alive, not you. Yeah. But anyway, these two dudes, this dude was six, about five feet ten, I was saying. Weighed about 260, 70 pounds. Beating on a kid that weighed 135 pounds and was about five feet three or five feet two. How could you do something like that? That's Anybody. a fat kid if he's five foot two and weighs 125. Yeah, he wasn't fat. That's a pretty strong or a strong kid, huh. muscular huh. kid, if he weighs 125 I've, and he's only five foot two. I've seen women five feet two, five feet three, weigh 125 pounds, about 30 pounds. They're, they're kind of thick. They, yeah, they were built. Right. <laughs> they wouldn't stick. Right. I mean, maybe I was, I mean, I, I was pretty short as a high schooler or somewhat, especially a younger high schooler. And I was like 112, um, 120, 135, 145. Uh, so who is this? Was this, who are you talking about? Are you, you witnessed a, a beating? No, I haven't witnessed, I, no, anybody witnessed it. Are you talking about Emmett Till still? I was just talking about Emmett Till. Oh, Okay. That's how they treated black folk down in. But the hey, States. she was—he was allegedly mistreating the woman. He didn't do my whistle. It wasn't merely a whistle, according to uh, what some people that say. That woman lied. She, she said it in her death on her deathbed that he didn't touch her at all. She did not say that on her deathbed. I don't believe you, man. You're just making. You're just say, repeating Come on, a mischaracterization of what you heard. You sound like my caller Mays, my favorite caller. You, you mean tell me? You think he touched that white woman? He might have. I don't know. Well, For some, the, uh, there was some like reason that. that she went out to get her gun, and that's when he left. Well, she whistled at her. He, no, he it wasn't just a whistle, according to her and according to other people. Yeah. What other people? If it was just a whistle, why would she get her gun? I don't know. So then why, why are you believing that it was merely a whistle? <laughs> That's what they do down there. You know what's up? Lord, the it was a two-way street. Blacks and whites were mistreating one another. No, he was. And he was Come one on. person, not black people. Come on, man. He was one. That's what one black, person. You uh, never heard I, of any white person, black person, treating a white person wrong down south. Oh no, that's not true. There were mur- there were murders, there were rapes and thefts. That was the accusation. Yeah, same I'm, thing with you, uh, Emmett Till. That's an accusation. That's true. Yeah. I got to run, Stephen and Marilyn. I like talking with you. Call me again sometime. I got to end. Okay. All right. I'll take care. Later. Bye. What a nice man. Can't we all just get along? I got to end, guys. Uh, it's Black History Month. This is Shuby Taylor. Rest in peace, Shuby Taylor. Lift every voice and sing. I hope you enjoy it, you musical Philistines. Joel Friday coming up next. Bye. Blacks, <laughs> let's not forget where we came from. Let's learn to love and respect each other. Shuby Taylor. Shoo-soo-soo-wa, shri-da, shra la la we we do sa shra la la ha we dee blah we dee sa da raw 
la da da shri, lo poo pa, la da da shra, we de saw, la da da ra, we da da saw, pee pa, little do be, if she do to be be, we da ra, sa ba da ha, sa la ra, sa la ha, ya, we da sa, ha ba da shra, ra pa da pa, fiddle do be, shra, fiddle do be, wouldn't we, should be spla, sha ba la ra, fiddle do to de spla, sha ba la ra, swimmingly pla, fiddle do ni shra, fiddle do da la, ba do le do, baby, wouldn't we, fiddle do da la, ba do le do, baby, wouldn't we, Man, <laughs> So good. Don't you love the organ? To all Friday TV coming up next. American Anchor Baby after that. All right, guys. Adios, America. I gotta get out of Joel's way. Love it, do the 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 do the